Hello, Frank Abusic here again. Um, what I have today is I have my QGIS open, and I'm running a Windows 10 uh, operating system, and I have a QGIS 2.18.5, and I have my nice uh, color infrared image here that I typically use to test out uh, workflows and so forth. So today I'm going to be looking at the functionality inside of the Orfeo toolbox. And more specifically, what I've been working towards is understanding the machine learning algorithms that are available in the Orfeo toolbox, OTB. And there are a variety of algorithms that are dedicated towards machine learning that you can use in a typical uh, land cover, a supervised land cover classification approach. So in the same way that you would collect training data and apply a supervised uh, land cover approach um, in, in, in a traditional sense, you can do the same thing by collecting training samples of your classes of interest and then uh, training your imagery and then using um, one of these machine learning algorithms. So I also notice that there have been some messages and issues posted to the message board, um, the OTB user message board about access to OTB functions inside of QGIS. So what I usually do is go to processing, go to options, and then come down here to providers. And this appears to be maybe a little different depending on users, but in the Orfeo toolbox section, I click on activate. And right now for me, I have my, old, my OTB files located in a specified directory, OTB uh, 620. And for the applications folder, it is the subdirectories of LIB OTB applications. And then the command line is OTB, whatever your OTB folder is, and then in the bin subfolder. So as long as you have those pointed to those two locations, uh, the functionality here uh, works pretty well. And I, and I actually had some issues with trying to figure that out because it, it didn't seem to be working initially. But anyway, so, Going forward, I have some training samples here. I've collected a water, impervious, bare ground, trees, open, and, and shadows. This is a four band nape imagery in near Charlotte, North Carolina, north of Charlotte, North Carolina, in USA. And since it is leaf on imagery, it has a lot of a lot of shadows. So we'll just zoom in here and look around. Uh, and you can see some of my impervious surface samples here are kind of this rust color, um, water samples, tree canopy samples. And I have some, what I'm calling open, which is basically grass, grassy areas. And also uh, I typically kind of go across my image and make sure I collect a, a, a good variety of samples. And these purple polygons are some of my shadow samples here. And if I go over to my training data set and just open up my attribute table um, and just sort by label or sort by class, you know, you can see I have about 37 samples, maybe four or five of, of each of my features. And initially, the, the idea here is just to test. I'm just testing some of these, but uh, some of the results are actually pretty um, surprising and, and pleasing. So I, I thought it would be worth showing a, a little video here. So. You know, what we do here is there is this icon, uh, create new shape file. You make it a polygon. Um, you make sure the, the reference system is set. And then you basically add your field. So for my label field, which is the numbers, is it's an integer field. And then I have a text field, which is class, where I actually write out which class it is. And then I go ahead and set up my training data that way. And then, you know, I go into my edit mode and I select the polygons that I want to use. And I select the polygons that I want to use for training and then um, save those 
And then I, those are my training samples, so I can turn off my edit. So the way this works is, and I, and I saw a nice video on YouTube. It was OTB and QGIS, a nice wedding or something like that. But it's a, it's a great video to kind of get the idea of how to do supervised training inside of QGIS using the OTB tools. So the video shows that the first thing we want to do is compute. We want to compute stats. So all we're doing is we're computing stats and we're saving it as an XML file. And then the next thing we want to do is choose the classifier we want to use. We have the support vector machine. We have the uh, random forest algorithm. We have the lib SVM. So we have two SVMs here. One is based off of lib SVM. The other one's based on the open CV, open computer vision. Um, um, algorithms or language. <laughs> and then we have K nearest neighbor. We have a, a boosting um, algorithm. We have a decision tree. We have another boosting. We have our naive bays and then our um, artificial neural networks. And if I click on any one of these and go into the help, you can see the, you know, some of the explanations. And for any one of these, you go to help. It has all of the um, different algorithms. So every one of the help dialogues looks the same as long as you choose one of these training images classifier. Um, so with that, I, I identify my input image, and then I identify my vector list, and then I input that stats file that I created from the compute image second order statistics. And then um, one thing I've noticed that if I if this on edge pixel inclusion is check marked or toggled on, and by default it is, I go ahead and turn it off. And you want to make sure that you're using the right attribute field to um, determine the the classification, and this has to be the integer field. So in my case, it's label. And then here we select the classifier we want to use. And since I selected the lib SVM, um, that is already, it's only one option there. But then underneath each one of these, you, you may have a few options. And actually in another video, I think I might show that I actually, this RBF, you know, turned out um, the best out of all the lib SVM functions. And, um, and then you out, you, you basically save a CSV um, file that's your confusion matrix, and it'll output a, a basically a confusion matrix and then a, a dot model file. Those are the extensions I've been using. So for confusion matrix, it's whatever name you give it and a dot CVS, um, I know CSV, comma space delimited. And then the model file is simply a, a dot MODL. And then when you actually set that up, it, it, runs the the training and then you use the image classification algorithm and here you can see that it's going to ask for your model so you input the image you want to use you if you have a mask you don't have to select it and then you input that model file you you just created and then your your statistics file and then you save your um, so here's what the, the model file looks like dot model and here's here's the other confusion matrix and so I would you know select my my model file and then you know name this and it and it would run it so what I've done here is I actually have several different um, outputs of of machine learning algorithms and, and, and kind of in the traditional sense of doing a supervised classification approach. And so I'm going to show, I'm just going to zoom in on an area here so you can kind of see some of the differences. And I just started at the bottom and, and went up the list. So if we go ahead and look at the, the SVM options, I, I just used a linear option in, in SVM and that's what the linear option looks like, and it looks pretty good. I mean, overall, it looks really good. Um, but when you start looking at it closely, you'll notice some of the differences. And then here's the R RBF option that I use, and just clicking on and off, you can see some of the subtle differences. But 
you know, they're, they're not huge. And then I, I use the poly and then I use the sigmoid option. Those are the four different options. And obviously the sigmoid, it looks like it's bringing in some of my water pixels into the, you know, on top of my impervious pixels. So that wasn't that great. Um, here is a random forest. And one thing I've noticed about random forest is, especially in the tree canopy, there's a lot of um, like shadowing and, and smaller polygons within the overall canopy. And then if you use a decision tree, you know, it, it kind of fills in a lot of those holes. The other thing about this particular example in, in random forest is it really kind of missed the road. So in terms of random forest, there is such a thing as overfitting and underfitting that, you know, I haven't really, I'm just using the default uh, parameters for most of these. Um, so that's kind of why we're seeing some of this. And then I have a the nearest neighbor output and it's, you know, it's kind of grabbing some of the lines and I'm sure I can go in and, and make some modifications. Um, and then I'm going to come down here to this, the boosting one that I use because all of these other algorithms actually took um, anywhere from 30 seconds to a couple minutes. And this is this image is is a 190 megabyte TIFF image, uh, so that kind of gives you an idea. But this GBT, so this GBT, I had to grab a file real quick, uh, is a is a boosting algorithm and I'm just scrolling down. I, I have a primer here and I'll tell you a little bit more about this primer that I use. It's, I basically copied and pasted off of a website that's really good. So the GBT is a gradient boosting algorithm and it looks like it combines um, several of the algorithms and uses um, a, a a tree classifier and you know if you want some really good information about general um, machine learning algorithms and what the differences are just type in analytics vendai in a google search and maybe with machine learning and you'll find this information it's a really good website talks about each one here's a decision tree it's a great primer here support uh, vector machines it's a great way to kind of get familiar with, you know, the, the, the details of machine learning. But, um, yeah, this particular process took about four to five hours, which I wasn't expecting when I actually ran it. But there it is. But anyway, out of all of these, you know, this the, the, the boosting algorithm or the um, the lib RBF option and. Uh, we're, we're probably two of the best for this particular um, example. And I have I ran another example on this, and I have to say that the random force and de decision trees are actually better in, in that example. So um, just want to just do an overview of the machine learning algorithms that are available in Orfeo Toolbox. Um, there are several good ones in there, and I just did a general classification here of some basic classes using a four band color infrared and i'm going to probably create another video because when i go through classification i like to use derivative layers um, to kind of help answer some questions about pixel confusion um, so if i if i do that i will uh, post that video shortly so hope that was helpful and you got something out of it and have a nice day and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.